Okay. Okay. Um, would Elodie... I don't know. Elodie, it was kind of your your theme suggestion. It came through the application process. This was your suggestion for something to talk about. So do you want to kick us off? Yes, uh, I can introduce myself, maybe. Okay. Um, I... I'm um, an artist and a musician as well. So I uh, create mainly video installation and I work with sound as well. I, I like to experiment things. Um, and so I share my time with um, as a teacher, a piano teacher, and as a visual artist as well. So yes. So um, I think it was very important to um, uh, to have some uh, reaction, you know, from other artists because uh, it's um, I think it's an experience. I mean, to be locked down. I think for me it's the first time, and I think for you as well. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think you you had to. Um, reinvent you know uh your work and the way you consider your work uh, because we had uh no exhibitions or i had exhibitions that uh, were cancelled you know so it changes a lot of things and for some artists it's very difficult to think about new way of um exhibit your work or you know these kind of things. So yes, I think I, I wanted to have um, uh, other, um, how can I say in English? Um, what do the other artists think? You know, uh, how do they feel? You know, so yes, it's very interesting. So. <laughs> I think that, um... I think that, um, well, firstly, I wanted to say, Elodie, thank you for your um, performance the other night. Yeah, the video was, uh, yeah. was awesome as well. From every Everyone was just like, oh my God, it was too short. Like, we want more, we want more. Like, yes, some, some people say this to me. Yeah, it's too short, but uh, because it's um, experimental, you know. So um, I used to do like um, 40 minutes but some, it's too long for some people because, you know, it's not like popular music, you know. So I said, okay, I'm going to do 20 minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, some people said, okay, you can do 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it should be better. I think that's well. Okay. Like when people were saying that, I was like, okay, so one, great that they were enjoying it so much that they wanted more. But to have a little respect, like an artist is giving you their work for free and you get to enjoy it for however much time, like they choose, you know, like maybe back it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was good that the, the, the feedback was <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, but yeah, what you say is really true about how it's not that easy for for everybody to kind of just go, oh, okay, well, that's not happening anymore, so I'm gonna do this instead, for many different, um, for many different reasons. Uh, what was your, do you wanna introduce yourself, Ugo, and um, then just give like an outline of, of how you found it? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm an architect, and I, as you know, I usually paint the emotion that transmit to me the places in, I've been to, but I do it in memory, not in the moment I've been there. So what, uh, in the beginning, when the confinement and lockdowns orders started, it was crazy because I had to cancel all the exhibition. I have planned to go to London and New York in this period. And in, in the first moment, it was kind of a shock. So all my life is upside down now so it's great it was crazy but i start i keep painting in my house i make digital painting and when i started i realized how, how different my paintings are, were starting to be and then it, it was uh, kind of interesting because my my paintings are kind of a research or what uh, 
a CT or a place transmit to me. And there, I realized there were elements that weren't anymore in the paintings. So I'm trying to analyze which ones and, and why. And in this way, uh, I realized that some of the elements I, I paint in the emotion, the whole emotion, I, I don't really understand uh, exactly all the topics of the emotion I'm painting, but I realized some of them were the noise of the city, the crowding of the places, etc. So, and in comparison, the, the ones before and the ones I, I made in confinement, uh, I paint the same place, but in, in confinement, they were some kind of uh, like alien space with no life. And which elements, which color is uh, represent the noise? Uh, so it was really interesting for me. And then finally, I made a collection that's now activity in the island uh, with this reflection that you can see the places and how the confinement affect to the artist. And then I realized I usually say that the uh, a, a place. Uh, transmit an emotion for me, which is different. It's it's time to go to a place, but I realize my own emotion uh, change the way of my perception of the place. So it's a uh, I found a, a new way of investigation in my painting. So finally, it's uh, to see a good part of the confinement. You know, so it it, it was very interesting for me in that place. In the beginning it was a terrible shock, but finally I find a way to go ahead with it, with my art and etc. So, and now we are starting a, a new normal in which I'm intrigued in how my paintings are going to change again. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think that a lot of artists would agree that the, the whole period has been like really um full of transitions it feels like everything's mm. in flux you know everything yeah. everything in the world around but also everything in your internal world is kind of exactly. turned upside down and um yeah shaken up a little bit yeah mm. um, what about you Sai? what did you, what did you find um so i've had a <laughs> a really tough time um because i'm a i'm a land artist um and so I spent my whole time during lockdown unable to get out, unable to create work, um, just furiously frustrating because we live, we live right, sure. on the coast, <laughs> right next to the sea. Um, and so I just spent lockdown up on the roof, looking at the sea, but not <laughs> and just kind of seeing my canvas like because my canvas is the beach so did you do meditation or something like that <laughs> yeah I, well I, I i kind of um i spent my time listening to music and just kind of immersing myself in music just trying to just trying to cope with with not being able to create mm. um as I say, one of the one of the things moving to the island gave me the opportunity to to kind of create my art as often as I would like because it's only a couple of minutes to the nearest beach. Mm. Um, How when we lived in just to give some context? Yeah, so so when we when we lived in England, um, like the nearest beach was kind of like a couple of hours drive away, and so everything had to be planned it was you know it was a full day to go and Stephen. to go and do a, a touring whereas whereas here i can i can jump in the car and <laughs> you don't even need to go in the car no, you I, just I, walk down for yeah, 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 <laughs> carry my tools down to the beach um and so yeah i, I found it immensely frustrating um i think that um Sorry, are you no, done? No, go on. So I was just going to jump in and say... You um, had to live with me. You could... like, well, one, I've had to live with him. Nightmare. But um, two, my experience has actually been quite similar in a sense that um, 
the things that I include in my paintings are all based on sketching like from real life. So it's um, kind of like a, a social commentary, I guess, that I um, then spin into my paintings. I can't think of another way to put that. Um, but I spend a lot of time out in the streets, on the beaches, drawing and capturing little scenes, like things that I think are particularly pertinent or that make me question the reality that I'm living in or, um, yeah, just kind of how things are. And then I compose them into almost like a collage, but in a painting. This is like how my work is at the minute. And so all of a sudden I had all of this time where I could potentially go and do that, but I wasn't allowed out and there was nobody to sketch, even if I did go out. Um, and so it was kind of, yeah, doubly frustrating because we both had to live with each other, not really being able to do what we wanted to do. Um, mm. And I don't think that, at least to start with, I don't think that either of us did a very good job of adapting. I think that we were both just feeling a little bit sorry for ourselves, to be honest. <laughs> Particularly mm. because I'd had this experience of being like, I was in the UK, I was working um, for galleries and museums, um, and yeah, like I say, almost got trapped there. So I had to cut short like this, that commissioned work to then come back here to kind of not do anything, you know, that was frustrating. Um, and it kind of threw me off because I hadn't, I don't know about you, Elodie, but when I have like, my work my practice it informs the things that i do like my participatory things with galleries and museums it informs that but it's very much a different headspace if i'm actually facilitating so like if mm -hmm. i'm in the gallery or museum delivering participatory projects or educational things then my head's in a totally different space and so yeah. i kind of prepared myself to be doing that and then had that cut short and then couldn't do it so it took me, mm -hmm. it took me a long time to kind of come up with something else. And actually, if I'm totally honest, it wasn't, it wasn't like, you both seem to have had a relatively positive experience, <laughs> but my, like through your own kind of processing, but my positive <coughs> experience came through somebody giving me commission work. You know, I got a commission and I was, and that gave me like a, oh okay and so then I kind of went off and did it but I think without that I would probably still be flailing about you know mm -hmm. I understand but I think for me um when the the lockdown happened um I said to myself okay I'm going to work a lot and I worked a lot during the first weeks but after I was like um empty I mean you know because I think as an artist, you need um, to be nourished yeah. with other people or you, you need to travel sometimes mm. to start a new project. And after uh, working a lot on a project, you know, an edition project, I feel OK, so now I, I can't work anymore because <laughs> it, it, it was a very strange Feeling, I think, but yes. For me, it was kind of the opposite. I, I, I couldn't create for the first couple of weeks. I was absolutely in shock. Uh, my mind was absolutely empty. But after a period of uh, kind of adaptation of that, is that the that I discovered what I I just said to you a new way to investigate and researching some different things. And I think it helped to me to understand my own painting because some of the things I painted, I don't really know what uh, exactly means. And then I restart to the game, a new way of researching with my painting. And actually when Confinement ended, I enter in shock again, it was, crazy mm -hmm. because normal with people again all this new research uh also disappeared again and yes, now yes. I'm again not painting and waiting for a new inspiration is it's really weird it's like mm -hmm. uh i felt really new emotions that where is that world going now so and i started painting with this emotion in my mind and it, it was interesting 
And now I'm stuck again. <laughs> I think we have to adapt ourselves. Uh, mm. So it's very difficult. I mean, yeah. it's always changing and yes. Mm. Yeah, I miss travel a lot because travel, usually you get many impressions and emotions of everything I don't have now. Because I can, yes, I can go outside and go through the island, but it's, it's normal place. It's really known for a long, long time. So they transmit to me nothing. It's just calm, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't paint in calm. I paint when I'm anxious or so it's crazy. <laughs> I think it's kind of part of the artistic condition to kind of need that sensory input and to really seek it out. I don't know a lot of artists who kind of stay in one place for all their life and lives and don't travel and don't seek out new experiences because that's kind of what triggers your process, you know? Mm. Like being mm. slightly uncomfortable or curious or playful or, exactly. you know, you need those things to kind of True, yes. Um and something that I, th I found really interesting once I had got this commission and started working on it one of the things it's for an arts charity in the UK and the commission is for all of the freelance artists that work with them they have given um, a commission to make some art about being an artist in lockdown and so one like part of the process was to have online zoom meetings with the other artists doing it and um somebody there was talking about how if you look back through history there are kind of individuals or groups of people that have always lived in confinement and they looked at kind of how they've made artwork and that helped them to make artwork which i thought yeah. was quite interesting and it led me on to um research this book i can't remember the name of the author now which is a bit annoying so when i post this on youtube i'll put it in the link um, but it's basically how somebody who was ill, it's like hundreds of years old, like in the 1800s, somebody was ill, they couldn't travel. And so they went on a travel around their bedroom and wrote oh, a book yes. about <laughs> their bedroom. I know the so, book. <laughs> so trying to, to re-examine what is mundane and kind of every day has been a part of me kind of being able to make again like having that curiosity about stuff that's you know like you mm. say that's kind of really normal and you feel really comfortable trying to make it something else mm. and do you think that uh being uh in a lockdown um maybe you became more closer um with I don't know your friends or other artists you know um, no do you think um I think kind of yes and no particularly to start with because everybody was kind of in this like you know same sea different boat like everybody's experiencing it all around the world but kind of slightly differently so at that point there seemed to be a lot of connection like generally between friends, but also particularly between, um, yeah, kind of professional contacts, I guess, other artists, people that I met through the festival last year, you know, people who I'm not always in touch with, but at that point I was getting in touch with people and people were getting in touch with me and kind of sharing experiences and thinking about, you know, and talking about them and what we're doing and how we can do stuff. And then it kind of petered off and now it's kind of, almost back to normal you know where you kind of have people on facebook and instagram and you like each other's posts and you know say a few words like in a comment but the kind of this kind of interaction is becoming less yeah i think i, I had the same experience there was when when lockdown and confinement started there was there was just kind of like complete isolation mm. Like everyone, everyone was in the same situation, but there was, there was kind of like complete isolation. It was like you're locked down, you're confined, and everybody seems to be like, okay, well, confinement means confinement. I'm not. There wasn't. I didn't feel there was there was interaction amongst people for the first for the first few weeks. 
everyone was like locked in their own bubble and didn't kind of I wonder if that was a coping strategy. <laughs> yeah. You know, before everyone started reaching out. What about you, Hugo? What did you find? I don't it was real really weird at the beginning because I, I have many friends uh, abroad and many artists I knew in the affairs of art around the world, etc. And I am usually in contact with them through internet. So in theory, it was the same. But what happened in the first couple of weeks is when I send an email to any of them to say, hey, how are you doing? Are you safe, etc.?" There were no answer for anybody because every, every of us were in shock. So many people never answered the mail, etc. So I started to be concerned about, oh, maybe they are sick about COVID or something or are in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So there were many worries for me in the first two couple of weeks or something. And after that, I think like to me, I think they adapted and they start uh, to answer the mail. So everything was uh, started to be different. And I don't know, but I think that affected also to me. Because in, and when I was seeing on, watching on TV some places I recently been in, and you see in that different way, I, I can't describe the emotion, but there were a, a terrible anxiety or I don't know how to explain. But it was when I was watching the images in the US when, okay, I, I should have been in New York at, the, at this time. And I see the images, the graves on the, on the ground and it was crazy. <laughs> I was absolutely in shock and with, in the contact with people, I was really, really worried about many of them. Yeah, New York was hit particularly badly, wasn't it? And I think still is. And I remember mm. seeing on the news, I think they had like food, like re refrigeration trucks, yeah, and yeah. they were using them as like temporary morgues. And I was just like, this is, it's like something out of, a crazy kind of post-apocalyptic like zombie yeah, yeah, kind exactly. of you know it just didn't i just it was like i was watching stuff and i knew it was real but it it wasn't registering that people that mm -hmm. i know again i have quite a lot of friends in new york and i was like people that mm -hmm. i know are actually living through exactly. that you know it's yeah i don't know what exactly. it was like in france elodie but here we've been relatively um, safe. safe, you know? Like, safe, yes. It's been, it's been kind of incredible how protected we've been. Like, mm. Lanzarote has had less than 100 cases and about three or four yeah. deaths. So yeah. seeing things like that on the news has been really quite, quite shocking. Is that mm. something that you've experienced firsthand or were you experiencing it through the news too? Uh, I mean, in France it's different because um, there were a lot of uh, um, disease, you know, and a lot of cases. So we, we needed to fill a uh, paper to say, okay, uh, I go out at this time, you know, and you, you had uh, only one hour, you know, just to go around your uh, area, you know, yeah. and that's all. So you can you couldn't take your car, you know. So it was very the frontier, you know, was really you know small. I mean, you know, so it was really difficult, and yeah, we were a bit afraid, you know, because uh, people say you you can't touch things without you know yes. uh, wash your hands, and it was a bit yes. Um, scary so anxious you know so yes it was very difficult but i mean um it changes um the notion of time because everything was slower even the answer you know <laughs> when you write an email so yes like uh if the time was uh, stopped um you know so yes the notion of time uh, were was different for me yeah. and for everybody, I think. I, think I absolutely agree. It was like uh, time stopped.
for for everything yeah. like yeah. even i the things i was doing were slow and take longer i don't know really why but <laughs> if something i usually do it in half an hour it took two days so it was crazy <laughs> here yeah. was a similar situation than in lanzarote it was we had no dead people here but covid it was relatively safe and uh, two days before the confinement I was planning my, my travel to London to the other affair. And then when I started watching what was happening there, uh, and I I called to the government to ask if should I go to London or not? That the, this was before the confinement. And they said, when are you going to London? Okay, in two days. Don't worry. In two days, you are going to have no doubt about I said, what, why are you saying that? Did you, are you crazy? What, I, I get really angry with the people answering these kind of things because I couldn't believe. And finally, it was reality. And it was, I, said, I, it, I think it took a, this couple of weeks to believe what I watch, was watching through TV yeah. was not a movie. It was a reality. Mm. It was incredibly <laughs> crazy and after that, when I started to realize it was real, etc., I realized my family is far away in mainland when things where things were different, are very much more dangerous. Mm. Uh, talking with my mother and my father that they are all people and they are in risk all the time, saying, "Are you taking measures? Are you going out the street?" So it it was crazy because normally as and no matter what age you are, it's your mother who's saying, are you safe, are you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was the opposite. I mm. was worried about my parents to uh, take seriously the measures. And are you wearing a mask? Are you going to the supermarket with gloves? With So it was absolutely, if, if somebody tell me oh, this is gonna happen a couple of months before, I would say this person's crazy. <laughs> I experienced that change really quickly so I was I was staying at my parents house and actually um, my younger brother and I my younger brother runs um, a theatre company so he goes down to London quite a lot to see the shows and stuff and Ugo you were due in London for the for the fair and so my brother and I were talking about coming down to London and coming and seeing the artwork. And we were having all these conversations. We were looking at train tickets and we were seeing all of this stuff on the news. And it was like, it was, yeah, it was like it wasn't real until then I heard yeah. like, yeah, your flight isn't gonna happen. Like you're not gonna get home. And I was like, what? Oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah, and crazy. Then, as soon as yeah. I got home, then I was like, okay, so I've just left my mum and my dad and a very elderly and sick grandma in the UK where actually it wasn't really being taken very seriously. And I was the same. I was like, why are you still going to work? Like my mum works in a garden center. You know, I was like, mm -hmm. that is not an essential job. Like stay home, stay safe. Are you wearing a mask? No, no, I don't think that the scientific thing supports that. We're being told not to wear masks. I was like, oh my God, wear a mask. We're being told to wear a mask. Wear a mask. <laughs> You know, and that kind of difference between, like you say, the role reversal, but also seeing how the situation was being handled differently around the world actually made it really stressful, I thought. Mm. Yeah, but before the, the, lock, the lockdown, uh, two days before, I was in the Netherlands, you know, because I was visiting a friend. And in France, it was okay, I mean. And uh, I saw, like... Uh, nobody in the streets. It was very different. People wearing masks and gloves, you know, in the train station. And I said, what happened? And I came back in a rush in France because uh, just um, the following day, they closed the frontier, you know. So it was very different, you know, but yes, yeah. very scary. <laughs> Were the people that you were with in the Netherlands, were they artists? Uh, he's a pianist, but he has another job uh, beside. But yes, he's a pianist. So but it's different because it, it's not his main job, you know. So, okay. so it's okay for him.
But yes, because the Netherlands is very close to uh, my country. You know, you have Belgium and after France, you know. So, but it was really different, you know. The distance is short, but the behavior of the people, I think they took it more seriously, you know, yeah. than in France. Uh, very particular. At the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I've been so, to yeah, Amsterdam sure. this December and I find them kind of, are they human or are they robots or something? They are oh, robots. serious, <laughs> never smile and very weird. <laughs> yeah, because I think they are more like, uh, it's not like, like Latin people, you know? Yeah, so exactly. they are, You know, <laughs> and I, more I maybe shy. To, to an event of art, so I was surrounded surrounded by artists. That artists are usually friendly people. They talk a lot. They like to talk about their their art, etc. But dudes were like machines. <laughs> Even the artists, it was crazy. I'm not going to say uh, this to my friend. But <laughs> <laughs> I think it's human being, yes. <laughs> it was something else that I thought was really interesting, the, the way that different, like the norms of different cultures kind of affects how things like this mm. play out, you know? Like yeah. you say, Elodie, like, I mean, for me moving here, it was really weird, you know? Like seeing blokes like hug and kiss each other isn't something that kind of happens in Yorkshire that is not normal you know like I mean I've traveled so I know that that is normal in lots of parts of the world but actually living it is quite different you know everybody wants to touch you all the time and like I'm actually quite a huggy touchy person but when I first came here like even when you just meet somebody for coffee everyone wants to like hug and kiss and like hug and, hug. and that kind of takes a bit of getting used to you know and I have an artist friend who um, spends a lot of his time in Asia and he was saying that there, that he thinks that the reason that they got it under control so quickly is because they kind of, they don't even really shake hands. They tend not to touch each other on interactions. It's like a totally different culture, you know? And they wear masks even if they have a cold. Like before this huge pandemic, pandemic mm -hmm. if you have a cold and you go on the train, you wear a mask to protect other people. So for them, it was kind of like not that different. You know, he experienced it as different because he was still an outside person in that situation. But like for, for him, it wasn't, you know, for them, it wasn't that different. It was just kind of how it was. So it, it's one of the things that I'm really curious about talking, you know, talking about how different people in different cultures kind of experienced it as part of their like internalized norms, I guess, for the society. Mm. Um, and I think that that's really interesting when people, artists, are kind of making artwork in response to their society that they're living in, you know? I can't wait to see the exhibitions that are going to be kind of around and about in six months' time about all of the stuff that's been made during lockdown. Yeah, yeah but because the, the lack of contact, you know, I, um, I started to create a new project because in France we used to... Uh, to say hello, we kissed each other, you know, and uh, for me, it's, it was very important. Uh, I I felt the, this lack of contact, you know, and I had uh, at home a musical device. I mean, you need to touch the device to um, uh, create sounds, I mean, you know, it's like a touch uh, instrument, I, I don't know how to say, you know. And so I used this to create a new sound project and musical project because you need to have a partner because you need to be uh, two persons to uh, connect, you know, yeah. the sound and the touch, you know. So I think, yes, I because without the lockdown and this lack of contact, I don't think I would uh, create with this. And I thought it was very interesting. So, yes. <laughs> a new project uh, came alive so. yeah. because yeah. because of this. I think this this lack of contact is is gonna remain. 
and for the countries in the southern Europe in which uh, contact is very important in their society, maybe this is going to change and it's going to uh, be more kind of what you were talking about Asia after the pandemic because I think many people when all this is going to be over, uh, maybe they are keep they keep wearing masks <laughs> and not shaking hands, not kissing, etc. So I think society is going to change. And as I realize how this affect to my art, and I think also yours, I'm intrigued about how art is going to be after. Yeah. Because in many societies, I think art also is going to change. But I don't know in what way. <laughs> I think yes. it has to. Mm -hmm. I mean... I, I can't see how it can't because particularly contemporary art, it's so rooted in the context that it's made in. Exactly. So it has to, it has to change because it has to respond mm. to what's going on. But I have no idea in what way because everybody's experienced it so differently and different, even in, in one place, you know, even in a household where, you know, technically they've experienced the same conditions the personal experience has been really different yeah. for people exactly. as to whether people have coped or flourished or totally sank you know i spent a few weeks looking like following people online and they were like oh like i'm in the studio you know all of their pictures that were like selfies of them with like you know 18 new paintings and i was like stuck in the i, I can't make any work right now like i don't know what to do yeah. And then seeing people like me, like in that phase, kind of posting online, like oh, I'm seeing all of these people saying that they're making all this work and it's making me feel like maybe I'm not an artist and I'm really inadequate. And, you know, like, so people's kind of responses to it are so kind of extreme, you know, and then there's everything in the middle as well, isn't there? Mm. Mm. I think maybe art is going to be more virtual, maybe, you know? Because when you haven't got places <laughs> to show your work, <laughs> you have to find another another way. But yeah. you know, even in music, I think. What do you think that means for the ways the artists create work? What What do you mean? So, I mean, as a painter, like something that's quite important for me is like the scale that, <clears throat> excuse me, the scale that I paint and the things that I paint on, like I choose to paint on things that I find, um, normally like old framed images, I tend to use those as like my boards. Um, and so like the, the physicality of the piece is kind of quite important. And if all of that is going to be taken away and replaced by a screen where you can't actually dictate how big somebody sees something or you know they're not going to be able to see any depth they're not it just kind of for me as a painter it kind of blows my mind how i'm gonna translate my yes, kind of visual language yeah. do you see what i mean yes i understand mm. so what would it mean for for your work elodie uh, my work is different because i'm not a painter sure. so <laughs> so for me it's okay because I can do music uh, virtually because, you know, I did a live. And um, yeah, for, it's difficult for me because I need, uh, indeed, I need to meet new people, you know, to travel, uh, to uh, create. Yeah. But um, to show my work, it's okay. It's not a, a big problem, I mean. but it's a problem in a way that, yes, I need to be uh, fulfilled or nourished, you know, with uh, the exterior world, <laughs> you know. So, yes, for me, it's the problem I had. That's super interesting because I know a lot of performers who say that, like musicians who say that it's totally different in fact some people who were booked to come and play as part of the festival have declined to perform online because they need the energy 
of the audience and I can't remember mm. I'm sure you're thinking of the same yeah. but an artist responded and said like something along but it's not a direct quote but something along the lines of like I'm a little bit lost like I don't know I don't know what to suggest I don't know what to do because I'm so used to working with people like although I'm a musician like actually kind of my my craft or you know like part of it is the fact that I'm doing that with people so it's interesting that that for you wouldn't mm -hmm. wouldn't pose a problem. Mm. What about for your stuff, Hugo? Because yours is like yeah. digital, so exactly. In theory, you can think uh, nothing is different because I paint in my house with my tablet or in a hotel or anywhere. But it's me who has changed. So yeah. this is the difference. I. I uh, already had my first opening after the confinement this Thursday and mostly it was the same. Obviously everybody was wearing masks, etc. But it was mostly the same, but was, <coughs> was different with me. And then painting the same way in places with the same tools, same, the, it doesn't affect to the technique, but it affected a lot to me and my Paintings, I don't know if you, Sarah, or have seen any of the new ones, are absolutely different. Yeah, absolutely yeah. different because I am different. Yeah. And as, uh, what we do with our art is transmit our emotions. And if we have different emotions, we make different things. And I, I realize about that. And as I said, now I'm in another period and I think the emotions are changing because this is not back to normal. It's not a new normal. It's absolutely different to anything you can think a normal way of life. But it's also different from confinement. So I think in months or a couple of weeks, I started to feel new, different feelings I need to paint. And I don't know how they're going to be, but I know I've changed it. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be interesting to, to look kind of a couple of years in the future and to look back and to see the change in your work and to see whether, exactly. whether artists' work reflect this, this environment <coughs> and then kind of transition back to, to kind of a previous normality or whether, whether it will affect us all in a, a kind of permanent state. I guess that links to whether somebody was i think it was you who was saying about how um maybe society will change and you know maybe we won't be huggy kissy and we will all wear masks and this kind of thing because this is something that i've been thinking about a lot as we're in the new normal new normal like you say it's not normal at all it's such a stupid name for it <laughs> but, yeah. um, but um like if if it is because it felt like this really like profound kind of life-changing experience for everybody but then is that gonna like continue to impact us or is it just going to eventually just kind of fade yeah. into a you know that happened happened then or is it actually gonna have really long-lasting impact i went for a coffee the other day um and somebody came into the to the coffee shop and just obviously without without thinking about it went up to the to the waiter and gave them like a hug and was like hello hello and then realized and then took a big step back as if like maybe they'd caught the leggy you know and i was like it's that kind of the the conflict isn't it between what you've always known and then what you're kind of trying to do now i wonder if it'll bring lots of kind of if you'll feel that tension in people's work, because that's kind of quite a, yeah, it's kind of meaty, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to remain in time. Yes. And maybe it's going to be interesting, maybe in a couple of years, to have again this video call and say <laughs> how our art changed yeah. or how mm -hmm. was the evolution or the transition. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting. and answers to the time ran fast and see what happens after yeah. <laughs> because I think many things are gonna change forever I think yes mm. I think that I'm up for that proposal 
18th of July, 2022. <laughs> 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 we can have this conversation again and see to see how much has changed. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Elodie, have you have you found um, a change in like in your experimental music? Have you have you found a change in your in your work? Um, as a musician, yes, uh, because um, I had to work with um, an English musician and we wanted to improvise, you know, so it's quite experimental. And But we uh, thought about um, working virtually, you know, but you need to be uh, close, you know, to experiment things, you know, you need to be in the same place. And so we postponed, you know, the, the work. But so, yes, it's, it's not the same, but, um, but um, yes, working a lot. If, if I work al uh, alone, you know, uh, with experimental music, no, it doesn't change. No, it doesn't change. Um, a lot of things. No, and it's, it's not like it's not like rock music, you know, or you know, <laughs> because you need to be in a band. You know, it, it's different. Yeah. You 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 can be alone and you know, like a geek, <laughs> a geek woman, working alone, you know, at your place and try new sounds and yes. But I guess that's like. You're talking about the, the actual process of making your music doesn't change mm. but what about their outcomes have you noticed any difference in the outcomes of your experimentation what do you mean by outcome sounds, like how it sounds or you know are you leaning towards certain textures or sounds oh, yes. or something like this uh yes i, I use uh, new devices like you know the touch touching yeah. instruments, this kind of stuff. And um, yes, maybe more like uh, sp spatial, you know, like uh, more maybe spiritual, you know, like, yes. So less, um, I would say in English, uh, beat, you know. Mm -hmm. so, yes. I think I uh, created um, more on the textures, you know, that uh, rhythm or these kind of things, because I think the time uh, was slower, slower, you know. So yes, I think <coughs> that's why my stands were different, maybe. Yeah. What about you? Have you found your like your your sketches? I know you've not been able to. To paint as much, but have you found like a difference in your, your sketch work? Yeah, definitely. So my sketch work <coughs> normally, I mean, for as long as I can remember, I draw every day. You know, I find that very quickly if I stop drawing, I stop the conversation with myself. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like I need to have that carrying on, or I get like a bit of a block. So I, I always draw, you know, and normally it's drawing, like I said before, kind of from observation. And then during this period, the only thing that I had to observe really was myself and the house. And so um, I now have, I don't know, two or I think I'm on my third sketchbook, just totally different from everything that I've done for the past two or three years, because it's kind of, there's a lot of self-portrait work. There's a lot of drawings of stuff that in the past I would have just dismissed as kind of twee and a bit unnecessary, like, I don't know, drawing chairs and like my cat and do you know what I mean? Just like the stuff that's kind of around me that's like there all the time that I kind of dismiss as being not, God, it sounds really bad, but like not worthy of being in my artwork because I'm trying to say something, you know, and like my cat doesn't help me say it. So why would I draw her? Um, but then all of a sudden, my cat is kind of helping me say stuff, you know, like, like my cat is like my, my companion, you know, and like, safety and like, you know, so it's kind of totally changed how I see things and what those things can 
kind of mean, I guess, in a picture. So I kind of use symbolism quite a lot in my works. Um, and yeah, what what a cat could have stood for before versus now is quite different, you know? <laughs> and I think that people will read things like that differently. Like before, if you'd put a surgical mask in a painting, you would assume that person is something to do with the medical profession. There would have been no kind of everyday connection. But now if that, you know, really simple item is in a piece of work, everybody connects to it because it's relevant to what's happening now. So like that kind of, yeah, that's kind of the conversation that I've been having about my art and what's going to happen. And at the minute, I guess it's all information gathering. Like I've not been making big paintings or finished pieces. I've just been kind of processing and yeah, thinking, I guess. I seem to have a very slow process time compared to other people. I'm like a I don't know, a 1980s computer versus an Air Mac, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? Now that you can go back on the beach, what's going on for you? Um, I haven't. I've been, it's really strange because I've been, when lockdown started, I was really excited and I was kind of like, oh, it's like there's nobody on the beach. There's no footprints on the beach. Like, it's like an absolutely pristine canvas. Um, but now, now we've been allowed out, I've been kind of scared to go back. Like, yeah. I've been kind stay. of scared to go and kind of to make marks again. I think I need to, I need to take the time and just kind of take my tools and experiment mm. rather than go and try and create work i just need to go and and make marks it's like if you were, would discover a new word maybe no yeah yes yeah. like new people sometimes you you feel like okay is is a stranger i don't feel you know comfortable maybe it's it's fitting for you mm. yeah it's been it's been really strange because for the whole time we weren't allowed out, I was like, I want to get to the beach, I want to draw. Pretty much the same conversation every day, just to give some context <laughs> to that. <laughs> and, and like now, now we're allowed out, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, yeah, I kind of like detracted myself from it. It's kind of frustrating. I think that's the white canvas thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's a... like if you have the best can I remember the first time that I made my own stretcher when I was at um, college and I was like 16 and I made this be it was beautiful it was like the most perfect like it was so lovely and measured like little sanded bits oh it was beautiful and I stretched the canvas and I primed it and then I spent about three weeks just like looking at it going <laughs> I mean it's beautiful but like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be interesting to see what what happens when I do get back to the beach. Absolutely. And, and when this time stopped, and you feel the time stopped, and everything was slowly, I don't know if it if it happens to you, but it's interesting to know. I discover boring because usually my life is very everything happened fast uh, you come from here to another place all the time running etc and i discover boring i haven't even remember the last time i was a whole day boring and after an initial period of frustration i discover it's not that bad to be bored <laughs> it was really you enjoy beautiful. to get bored <laughs> I think that being busy is one of the things that kills creativity, actually. Exactly. I think that being being bored, if that's what... Yeah, I don't even feel like it is being bored. It's just having that kind of space, that pause. That, for me, is, like, really potent. It's, like, full of potential. And this mm. is why every year... I'm still hoping to go this year. Every year I go to Cyprus to um, uh, an art campus there called the Cypress College of Art. It's not a college, it's just a campus where artists 
musicians, writers, etc., can go Ooh, and make artwork. Awesome. And it's um, in a village. In I mean, you can see the sea. You can walk to the sea. Um, and there's like a big strip down the bottom if you get the bus. But really, in this village, there's unless you go and fight, if you unless you go out and seek it, there's nothing to do other than make art, you know. And like maybe I don't know, watch the snakes or like you know, there's there's nothing going on. There's no TV. There's no radio. There's no there's not a bar. There's not a restaurant. There's nothing. There's just an art campus, a studio, loads of tools and lots of space and time and I make more artwork there in like I normally go somewhere between two and six weeks and I will make more artwork in that period than I will do for the rest of the year because there's nothing kind of distracting me and I wouldn't say mm -hmm. that I'm ever bored during that time it's just that I have time to kind of be and do it you know without the distraction of like oh I have to go to this or that or I've been asked to do this or you know, and even stuff like, not even work stuff, but like washing the pots and things like that. You just kind of, it just kind of becomes like a, well, yeah, like whatever, I'm kind of making work, you know? Yes, I think it's like, uh, I try to, um, uh, to feel like um, a residency, I think. Yeah. An art, an art uh, residency. I think the, lo the lockdown uh, is like, yes, <laughs> a residency. Who did we speak to? We we spoke to an artist. Do you remember at the beginning of lockdown? We spoke to an artist who was on a residency. Ooh, Pascal, I think and, it was. And he, like, lockdown incurred, and and he was stuck. He stuck at the residency. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's made a film about it, right? Yeah. Yeah, he made a film and, about his experience. Yeah. Yeah. And you know where where was it? Where was his residence? Yeah, I think it, I think it was Ireland. I think it was kind of in quite a remote place in Ireland. Um, and there was just the studio, and the studio okay. was like away by itself, away from everything else. Um, <laughs> And he was he was coming to the end of his residency. Yeah, he'd been there for a bit. And then like he was locked down and, and he couldn't get out and so he, he was stuck there for the whole the whole time. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to catch up with him and, and find yeah. out, yeah. Yeah, he was alone as well, there was no one else there, just him. Yes, oh my god. <laughs> I bet that was quite intense. Yeah. Yes. Mm. I think as well with the the festival, we we struggled initially with the festival. Um, Imagine, because obviously yes. Hugo, you you know we were you know mm -hmm. we were all set to go physically, um, and then it, it turned around and we were like, right, okay, we need to we need to either just cancel or or reinvent this, and there was a lot of there was a lot of holding back on whether we should whether we should take the steps to cancel whether <coughs> we should continue um, and then when we did actually transfer to to go in digital it was interesting to see the responses from artists and the speed of responses from artists mm -hmm. and it was like everybody's locked down everybody's in their own house with nothing to do why is it taking a week to get a response to an email? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know? mm. And it did happen. It happened. Maybe yesterday or the day before that was like, <laughs> oh, so I've just seen like all these emails from you about the festival. Like I've been, everything's just been so up in the air that I've not like not thought about it, you know? And so we were kind of thinking that it would make it, easier for artists to engage in stuff and actually as organizers that's not been our experience at all it's made it super difficult for people to commit time of any sort yeah and to commit yeah any sort anything you know like it's been really really interesting that people <coughs> just haven't been able to process and able to kind of yeah commit it's commitment that's been like a yeah, real issue commitment has been the the big problem yeah like just kind of I, I 
I thought when we when we offered out events, um, I thought that would be one of the things that we would have like a huge response from artists. You know, artists wanting to engage with other artists, and it's been it's been really interesting because that's that's not been the case, has it? People seem to want to engage, but on their own terms. So stuff that we're putting on the YouTube channel and in the galleries where people can interact, like not in real time, that's really popular. But things like this where kind of immediate responses and kind of immediate interaction is required has been, yeah, really low uptake. Mm. Apart from the digital dinner, the digital dinner has had a lot of people responding to that. But I don't know if that's because when we sent out the invite, it was still really far away. And I think that that's one of the things that COVID has done as well. The lockdown has kind of made it, you know, you were saying that time's been like a bit warped. So when it said, oh, the 24th of July, people are probably like, oh, that's like miles away. Like things will be different then, you know? So maybe we'll turn up for dinner and there'll just be us and no one else. But who knows? The, the response to that has been different. But um, yeah, it's been mainly things like, YouTube and the galleries where people can watch and engage and then like leave a comment or people have been like messaging us like oh I've just looked at this that was really nice and you're like okay that's good you, you I mean you could have come to the actual thing you know yes. was happening, but okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know maybe you just get out of the habit of it I don't know what was your opening like was there lots of people there was everybody there that you expected to be there or did you find that people were reluctant to come or were like really excited to come because there hadn't been anything it it was surprisingly good and crowded with people yeah. we have a limit of people that can enter the place it's a very big place we didn't expect to be full but it was so i think people is anxious to recover their life <laughs> And with the measure, the distancing, the mask, but everybody was sur surprised about the, it, it. And for me, it was amazing. It was, oh, it's life again yeah. with people. <laughs> everybody around my paintings and I'm talking to them like before. No, it's what, uh, it was uh, harmful <laughs> <laughs> that yes. maybe things step by step are gonna back to normal in a way but <laughs> that was really good i'm really happy with this because it's uh, encouraging this is gonna happen again yeah and people is uh, i think people is uh, uh, waiting for something to go and see arts and see new openings etc and when they know there's gonna be one they're going so I think this is a positive thing. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think it's going to take time. But it's these kind of things that uh, uh, makes you recover hope. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm really happy. It's a good day after my opening. But <laughs> before the opening, I, I thought nobody's going to come because everybody's afraid about how are you going to plan an opening with many people nowadays? This is crazy. Yeah. And I was dealing with the <clears throat> director of the museum. Are you sure this is the right date for this? <laughs> yes, I think there's going to be no problem. But I, I was not really sure about But it was really, really good. And people answer they they were also answers about uh, and really curious about asking very interesting because you think it's the first event after the confinement so everybody wants uh, something different to do after all this period of days that all of them are the same <laughs> yeah. yeah I think that that's really true that people are after something different even kids so um uh, mm. A commission that I've got um, again for the UK is making um, arts activities for vulnerable children because they have had lots of feedback that actually kids don't want to be looking at a screen anymore 
And it's like, you know, I've spent the past five years trying to make activities like super exciting and super engaging because trying to get kids away from screens is like a nightmare, you know? And then I'm being asked, like, no, they just want to come and like, just give them a simple drawing activity. That's what they want to do. It's like, wow. Yes. <laughs> like it's kind of, yeah. So I, th I think my participatory work will have changed because uh, I've particularly with young people, I've spent a lot of time trying to make it more in line with the things that they're interested in and or, as a way to kind of draw them into stuff, you know, but perhaps that's going to be less important now, you know, in the same way that kids are like kind of gagging to get back to school and normally you can't get them to school. Like if you take something yeah. away for long enough, then actually you know, it's just kind of a natural human response to want it, isn't it? Yeah. As a piano teacher, as um, I saw that my students wanted more lessons. I mean, because yeah. I thought uh, they are going to say, okay, I give up a bit, you know, the piano because, and no, they want more lessons because during the summer, I don't give lessons, you know, piano lessons, but I worked until now, you know, and it never happened before. So, yes, I don't know. It's strange. Were you giving lessons okay. digitally or were you giving them in person? Uh, both. But during the confinement, it was uh, by Skype, you know, and it's different because you can't do this with... Uh, um, children like three or four years old, it's impossible, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a little bit tricky, you know. But, um, yes, I, I start again to give lessons, um, with uh, face to face, I mean, you know, but we wear masks as well because it's important. And with the piano, it's difficult because you need to clean every time. The yeah. piano so so it yeah. changes a lot of uh, things i mean uh, you can't touch the fingers you know yeah. so yes it's it's difficult it's, it's it changed a lot yet so mm. hmm. <laughs> this has been super interesting i hope that um it's been interesting for you as well i found it really informative actually just listening to other people's experiences yeah. And if you want to do it again in two years, I'm down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's do it again in two years. <laughs> <laughs> but what I think is the events that they are gonna take place after all this, they are gonna be very successful. But because people is expecting a uh, new, I don't know how to say it in English, uh, new things to do and to experiment and to feel mm -hmm. like, because they are feeling nothing and mm -hmm. okay there's a concert there's an exhibition okay everybody's gonna go there because before we have a really huge offer of culture etc and people say okay i get tomorrow you know yeah. but now yeah, yeah. And yeah. finally tomorrow then the day after tomorrow and finally they don't go but now it's I was really surprised this Thursday about this, but not only me, as the, the director of the museum in which I made the exhibition said that is the, the time in the whole history of the museum with that amount of people in an opening. And I'm not the most important artist that I have ever exhibited there, not at all. But I think it's that people is expecting what to do? Oh, okay, there's an exhibition. Everybody's going there. So maybe it's encouraging to us to maybe next festival next year is going to be the great one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to putting on a physical exhibition rather than a digital exactly. exhibition. <laughs> this year's been this so, has so been much so like hard work. Much hard work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're artists, we are not like computer programmers and making virtual oh. galleries and <laughs> hey, yeah. People, people have been like, oh, it must have been so much easier this year because you've not had to like arrange for all the artworks. I'm like, no, post me the no, artwork it's any day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it takes time, yes. <laughs> I think also just 
just having the physical <laughs> contact with the artwork yeah and the people i've missed being like for me the events have been really important because like you were saying elodie about kind of you know topping up your tank and feeling like you have kind of stuff inside so that you can give out one of the things that i find kind of most nourishing is being in contact with other artists and hearing what they're doing and sharing experiences and you know and so yeah things like this i found really valuable because it helps me to get a little bit of that i mean but nowhere near what we normally get out of an event like this it's yeah been hard yeah it has been hard <laughs> it has been hard because people yeah, have asked sure. you know why do you put in so much work like what what's kind of in it for you you know and that's what's in it for us isn't it it's like the experiences you know and the contacts the the kind of yeah just being with other artists having a space where artists are coming together that's like so rare and so valuable and yeah we've had like a lot of the work this year and less of that stuff that's really valuable to come out of it so kind of it's made us think a lot about the festival as well actually and how we'll approach it in the future yeah if we can who knows what is um gonna happen next year you know whether we'll all still be wearing masks and distancing or um heber I, we can we can open the floor up to to questions heber have you got any questions that you would like to ask um hi everyone Hello. do you hear me Yes. Yeah. Um, it has been really fantastic. I've learned so much things with you today. Um, I would like really to thank you for this uh, meeting. I was really surprised when I see that I am the only one who joined, but it was really interesting. Well, I just ha um, I have only one question. Um, I'm not an artist. I am only a teenager, and I have 14 years old. And I, uh, during the quarantine, I discovered my passion to drawing and painting. But the only problem that I have faced is that when I'm drawing something, it was always related to my, uh, to my humor. When I happy, when I am happy, I do something good, and when I, when the opposite side, there's something really frustrating. So, mm -hmm. what to do? Um. For me, I, I think I would embrace um, embrace the art that you're creating when you're not in a good mood and kind of don't discard that. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, right. Oh, oh. 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 We couldn't answer. <laughs> what happened? Maybe she's been um, cut off. The oh. But we could, we can still answer, and then when it goes live on the YouTube channel, she will see it. Yeah. So continue. So yeah, I, I was just gonna say that I would embrace the art that you're creating that you're not happy with. Don't discard that work. I think not discarding things is my number one tip. Like anybody that I work with. Um, like I spend quite a lot of time working with younger artists and I think the tendency is to think that nothing is how it should be or how you want it to yeah, be nothing, and then it's, good enough. it's only when you look back that you realize that the, you know the value in what you have so I would just recommend to keep everything that you draw and um, yeah and just maybe have like set aside a little bit of time to kind of reflect on it and think about with hindsight rather than in the moment like with hindsight of like a month or two months do you still feel the same about it and if you do why and then you can start to pull <coughs> things apart a little bit more and kind of build your visual language a little bit you know yeah i think when you are you're an artist you put uh, a part of yourself in your creation mm -hmm. so it's like in music if um, nothing bad happens, you couldn't create, you know, maybe less, I don't know, you could create less 
interesting things or I mean you need bad maybe bad feelings or bad you know experience to yes to fulfill your your art yeah I think for 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 me it actually doesn't matter as for me or good feelings and bad feelings are good for us both ways hello again welcome back when you are in a in a good mood or something uh, the feelings i pain the emotion etc are different and for me i feel different than that but when i'm in a bad situation with really uh stressed or something i need to paint for me it's like a t- therapy or something to feel better and curious it's curious that sometimes the art is even stronger when you're painting faster because you are oh, oh my god i need to paint i need to do something to exit from that and some of the paintings i really like the most i made are painted bad feelings i was not good So I think as you said you have to embrace your art even if you're in a bad mood because if you paint you your paintings are going to be different but maybe could it be even stronger transmit more and what happens to me is the after I don't like to watch at these paints because they bring back to me the emotions I felt when I've been painting them but for the other people most of them they claim their attention and i said oh, i don't want to see this one but <laughs> it is good for art also yeah. and also with the the consequence for me is kind of a therapy after i paint if i feel really bad i stress etc and i paint there my emotions are not more anymore in, into me are in the painting and i feel good again so i think you have to embrace your bad feelings and paint them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will try to do it. <laughs> Because when I do so, I just feel worse. Okay. I was going to say that um, on the Lacuna Festival's YouTube channel, it's not up yet, but we are in the process of uploading um the last panel discussion which was around how uh, it was art and mental health but a lot of that conversation revolved around how art is kind of a like a tonic or a therapy for the artists and how um artists use their artwork as a way into and out of their emotional states so maybe keep your eyes out for that that might have some other helpful um sort of nuggets in it because yeah. there were I think there were three or four different panel artists then who were sharing different things Heba so that might help. Yeah. I think Heba um we didn't know whether you were going to come back. Um so we all continue to to answer your question um in case you wanted to to listen again and and watch the video again back on 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 YouTube. Um but i think it was interesting that that all of us here said kind of the same thing um don't discard the work that you're not happy with keep the work even if you don't let anyone see it initially keep the work that you're not happy with um and reflect on it look back on it okay thank you i think I think if you if you do that you'll find that there's there's quite a lot that you can learn um from from what you consider is is your best art and what you consider is is not good. Yeah, that's good advice. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Eva. Thank you for you too. You're very welcome. Um, Heba, if you if if you have any work online or if you'd like to share any work, get in touch with us on on like any of our any of our channels on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, anything like that. Get in touch. Okay. If there's anything that we can that we can help with, we will 
We will definitely, we will definitely help. help. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. You're more than welcome. <laughs> Does anyone want to add anything else before we kind of sign off? Nobody? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like to thank you, uh, both of you, because you made a big uh, amount of work with the, with the festival who became digital. So thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and thank you for, thank you for your, your previous event and thank you for for suggesting this event. <laughs> and Hugo, yes, thank thank for you. inventing this festival. And you are doing a really good job here. I am very grateful for you in these islands to bring this kind of cultural event here. I wish the next one in person, <laughs> yeah. etc. I can't wait for it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for all the hard work you you put in over in Puerto Ventura, Hugo. Um, it won't be wasted because we will be able to build on it next year yeah. for sure. We were so excited to be to be coming and doing the work with you over there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Next year. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.